graphic you're looking at was created using Avid's Marquee Title Tool. Hi everyone, this is Frank Harold, and I'd like to show you how this effect was done and why I think this true 3D effect tool should really be part of any editor's skill set. So let's close this movie and let's open up Media Composer. And in Media Composer right now I have just a very, very simple setup. I downloaded, easy to find, it's just a simple star field. On that star field, I put a little bit of an effect to just blow it up. It lasts 30 seconds, and right now there's just, a, there's just some music on it and a star field that has a little um, blow-up effect on it. So we're going to open up the Marquee Title tool by going up to Clip, New Title, or you can go over to Tools and say Title Tool Application, Clip, New Title, and when you get that, you'll get two or maybe three. If you have the latest version of Media Composer, you'll also get Title Pro. But I'm going to open up uh, the Marquee Title Tool. Just like with the standard Title Tool, you will see the background, depending on where your, your current time indicator is on the timeline. And it's simply the, the star field that I've set up. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the Earth. So when you first open up Marquee, there are three tool sets that come up with it. There's, there's something called basic, basic animation, expert animation, big monitor. But the, the, the starting point is the best starting point is just open up with the basic ones. So that's where we're right, we are right now. Come over to object, create DVE. Okay? That would be object, create DVE. By the way, we're going to be constantly going to window and properties. Certainly we're going to be on window a lot, but window properties will give us the properties of all these things that we open up. So we'll constantly be coming back to this. But for starters, we're going to go over to Object, Create DVE. As soon as you do that, you get a beautiful white screen. Okay, what do we do with this? So I'm going back up to Window, Properties, but now we're going to go to the Properties of the DVE. When that opens up, we'll get a window down here which says DVE Properties, of which there are a few. The one we want is Sphere. Open up Sphere and we got a little circle. Great. What we're going to put on that circle is a texture. So I'm going to go back up to Window and I'm going to go to the Library this time. Window, Library, and I'm going to go to Textures. When you open up that, you get another window, of course, and in that window, under textures, there are a number of textures that come with Media Composer. There are also user textures. If you just click on user textures, it'll say new texture. If you say that, it's going to say, well, what do you want me to get the texture from? In my case, I downloaded, and these are easy to find, a texture map. If you type into the, uh, uh, on the internet and just say, um, texture map Earth. There's a s many of them you can choose from. Uh, I got texture map Earth and I've got texture map Moon here. I've already put those into my user category right here. So I have Earth texture map and I have a Moon texture map. Double click on it and that texture map is now applied to that DV effect that we just created. And already we got something kind of interesting going. What I want to do is I want to make that smaller now. So for the moment, I have to go up again to Window, Properties, and this time to Transform, because I want to change the size. And we get a Transform window that opens up. Now, I'm going to scale this down to about 75% of what it is now. You have an X scale, a Y scale, and a Z scale. They all have to be the same. You can't just scale one of them and, and, and not all of them. But if you want it to still remain a circle and rotate properly, they all have to be the same. So I'm going to 75. On the X, we'll go to 75. On the Y. And most important now is to put 75 on the Z. Or if you don't do that, you'll get a very strange rotation. We want to make sure that this position also is dead center. If I move it over here, you see my position on the X has changed. If I just use this little button on the end, it will it'll center it and will zero things. All right, so I want to zero everybody to be zero. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to rotate this. But now we're talking about rotating it and animating it. So I'm going to go up to my tool set and I'm going to go to basic animation. We were just in basic before. Now I'm going to go to basic animation. I get a new display and on the bottom of that display I get a timeline which defaults to five seconds. If you look over here and you can possibly see it, it's five seconds long. What I want to do is I want to change the duration of the timeline. Go up to File, Duration, click on Duration, and just simply change this to 10. Well, let's, I'm going to actually, I'm going to make this 30 seconds long. 30, 0, 0. And we have a timeline now that's 30 seconds long. Over the course of this 30 second timeline, I'm going to rotate this once. So, to do that, up in the corner here is a little icon. It says animation. All right, right here. You will not see this if your tool sets are set to basic. But if you're in basic animation, you'll get this icon over here. Click on that. I have to see my transform properties again now. So, to open that up, window, properties, transform. There's my transform window. It's going to rotate on the y-axis. So we want to be turning, we want to be affecting this value here so it rotates on the y-axis. So if I come back to the beginning of my timeline right here, my rotate, my uh, animation button is, is selected as red. So it's, it's, it's reading whatever I do now. So if I rotate this and you notice nothing happened, nothing happened because I didn't select the object. So now I want to rotate this, okay, but I want to start at zero. And I'm going to go down to the end of my timeline and I'm going to type in a 360 for one total revolution. So for, for in 30 seconds this thing is going to rotate around one revolution in 30 seconds. You can use the space bar or you can hit play here. And you got you see the rotation happening. Okay, we've rotated the earth. Very nice. Go back to the beginning. Now we're going to create the moon. All right, to do that, let's turn off animation right now because we're not animating. If we leave this on, we could really mess things up. I shut it off. Object, create DVE one more time. We get that white screen again. Window, properties, properties of the DVE. Okay, again, the same thing happens. We have a choice. I'm going to make a sphere out of it. And I'm going to turn this. I'm going to just kill that so it doesn't take up my real estate. And I want to see my textures again. So, window, library this time, textures. And in my user textures, I have the moon texture map right here. If I click on that, drag it over there, voila, we have a moon. Now, I have to make this obviously smaller than the Earth, and obviously this is not going to be the scale. The moon is 250,000 miles away. And this moon was probably going to be only a few miles away from the Earth. Anyway, we're going to make the moon. We made the Earth about 75% of the size. Let's make the moon 25% of the size of the Earth. So again, going up to, to Window, Properties, Transform, and Scale. One more time here. Now we've got the moon selected. So if I make this 25, and I make everybody else 25, just like we did with the Earth. The Earth was, of course, 75. 25. Remember to do the Z also for 25. Okay, we got a little moon here. But the moon has to rotate around the Earth. Where it's sitting right now is going to rotate right in front of the Earth. So I'm going to take the moon and I'm going to stick it over to the right of the Earth over here. And now, this is the kind of a tricky part. Up here, you have an icon that says Rotate Tool. When I click on that, we get a different display here. This is the center of rotation right here. I'm going to drag the center of rotation and put it right over the center of the Earth. 
okay? Now it's going to rotate around that center of rotation. So once again, if we make the rotation, one complete rotation around in 30 seconds, that should do it. But this time, I think we're going to be rotating again around the, around the y-axis. So, But let's start by going to 360. Again, be, to start, because we want this go, to go the other way. We want it rotating the same way as the Earth. Just more interesting to be going the other way. Let's put in our values now for our animation, which is we're going to start at 360. And then we're going to put this down to the end of the timeline. And we're going to make this one zero. So now we're animating around. But you see what's happening? The moon is in front of the Earth because, and here's the magic of Marquee, we have to make this a 3D layer. We're in a 2D layer right now. So how do we do that? We come up to Window. We come up to Layers this time. And right now, if I right click on this layer, it says Layer Type 2D. I want to make it 3D. Okay? 3D layer. And now when we rotate this around, the Earth the moon goes behind the earth. Very cool. I'm going to turn off the animation and we're going to do one more thing to give this some really good look. Up here on Quick Titles, this is the, the Quick Titles properties. Um, by the way, if you lose this window, again, come over to Window and just say Quick Titles. If, so I'm going to just shut it off and you see Window, Quick Titles, and it's back. Okay, I've selected that object now. I want to select it. I want to turn Enable Lighting. I want to come over to this object here, and I also want to enable lighting. Right here, we have a lighting icon. If I light this up, we see that this is where the light is. You can see it affecting the objects. I'm going to change the type of light by right-clicking on it. Simply right-clicking on it, it says Light Type. I'm going to go to Infinite, which just gives it a broader feel. And you can see what happens there. You can see where the sun drops off. Now we have, if I go, I'm going back here to get rid of the light. And now we have a little beautiful effect here, running in real time. Now to save this effect, to save this effect, you go up to File, Save to Bin. Give it a name. Say OK, and it will start to render this thing. And this will take a while, and I'll come back We'll cut this part of the uh, recording and come back when this thing is rendered. Okay, when this uh, rendering process is done, you still have to go through one more thing. Now it has to upload it to a bin in, uh, in, Mo in Media Composer. And it will kind of do that automatically, but it will ask you where you want to put it. All right, the rendering process is just about complete. Where do you want to put this? It says Save Title. I have simple bin called Elements. If I say save it, it goes through another process of creating media. It will go through three processes. It has to create an alpha channel. It has to create a TIFF sequence. And this will take, as you can see, the estimate here is about five minutes to do that. So once again, when this is done, we'll come back and take a look at what we've got. I will, I'm, going to, I'm going to pause this at this point. Okay, we're near the end of the rendering and creating process. And actually, I would say this entire thing took approximately 15 minutes, all total. 
before it wound up in a bin. And there it is. There's our beautiful creation sitting for us, waiting for us in a bin. I am now going to go and add a track to my timeline by holding the control or the command key and typing a Y. And let's edit this, uh, this title, if you want to call it that. I'm going to edit this title into my timeline and we'll put this across. And we have a really nice looking 3D effect created with the Abbott's Marquee Title Tool. And this is just one of many things you can do with the Title Tool. It's worth exploring and looking into. Unfortunately, many editors don't really realize the power of this tool. So look into it. Well, anyway, thank you for watching. I appreciate that. And I welcome your comments. Thanks. See you next time.